OK, so um, I guess the main uh, topic for today is uh, domination. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> conjugation for these contact uh, Hamiltonian shells. And then we'll eventually uh, use what I say for this. You know, at the end of the lecture, we'll use what I say regarding this to talk about how you can use these over twisted disks with the connect sum to fill these model shells. OK, so, so recall that uh, uh, contact. Shell. This is what we reduced the problem of extending a contact structure to. So it's a is the piecewise smooth ball where eta is almost contact such that uh, eta is genuine on a neighborhood of the boundary. And our big question of these, uh, the uh, main issue, when can we homotope eta to a genuine, genuine contact structure? That was what kind of the big issue that the existence problem was reduced to. So, uh, kind of to help re start to reduce this problem, let me just define domination from the the title. So, I'll say that um, the contact shall be minus e to minus is dominated by shell B plus A to plus if uh, A to plus can be homotoped rel boundary of B plus to A to such that uh, I'll write it over here. Such that one, uh, you have that the smaller shell embeds as a contact shell B plus eta as contact shell as con as almost contact structure. Yeah, there's. There's just there's three um, as almost contact structures and two uh, eta restricted eta is genuinely genuine contact on B plus set minus B minus. So the picture is here's B plus, here's B minus, and we uh, can embed it into here. Such that eta on this ring, eta is genuine. So basically, you want to, so the way you should think of this is uh, if one shell 
is dominated by another shell, you should think of this as basically uh, saying that there's a cobordism, there's a contact cobordism between the boundary of B minus to the boundary of B plus, but with a contact structure. And so, so lemma, it's easy to see from this that if B minus, eta minus is equivalent to genuine contact structure, then so is B plus. It's because you, you have eta minus in here, you homotope it to a genuine contact structure, and then you have genuine contact structure on the inside, and on the annulus you have a contact structure. All right. So recall from last time, That given uh, a function like this, where this is a subset of R2n minus 1 star shaped, star shaped domain, we built this, we built a contact shell bk eta k. So I, I won't, where this bk is basically the area under the graph of k shifted by some constant, so that k plus some constant is now always positive. And but so the key point, so I'm going to give some proofs about how, so what I'm now going to present is some proofs about how uh, when one of these contact shells dominate the other. Um, and so if we remember previously when I defined it, I defined this almost contact structure here in terms of this choice of row. I'm not going to present the proofs by telling you what formulas of rows to pick. I'll just tell you kind of what this, I'll just, it'll be easy, more easier to explain just what this in intermediate region is. Um, so, so for that purpose, just let me recall. Uh, that the boundary of BK, eta K, is, can be written this way. Uh, K, which is equal to R2 union T star S1, K, where this is element of delta such that uh, B is less than or equal to K of XT and x in the boundary as a subset of delta times r2 with the contact form lambda plus bdt. And this region is the graph of the function k over the cotangent bundle. The subset of delta times t star s1. So there's a partial order.
And this partial order is defined this way. It is defined to be defined to mean 0 that the domain is contained in one, the other domain. One is that k is less than or equal to k prime on delta times s1. And two is that k prime is greater than 0 on delta prime set minus delta. So pictorially, Here is delta. Here is delta prime. So k is maybe something like this. I mean, we can get more negative. So this is k, and then k prime is like that. So as long as they're comparable, you have that uh, k prime. So as long as they're comparable, k prime is bigger, and then when they're not comparable, you require that k prime is positive. So on delta prime, I could be lower than k. Oh, well, out in this region, k is not defined. <laughs> so, and we had the following lemma. So it turns out, so the, the statement of this lemma is just that this partial order behaves well as how you would hope it do, does with respect to this notion of domination for the shells. So if k delta less than or equal to k prime delta prime, then bk eta k dominated by e k prime a to k prime. All right, and uh, so the proof well, so I need to tell you what this annular region is. That expands between them. And if I draw it back in, so here's, so the vertical bars, the vertical white bars are this sigma R2 part. And I, I can take the caborism, like the one you see, that's just by. So that is this is contact. So you take the region, uh, the contact annulus is given by kind of the region between the two graphs given by k less than or equal to v k prime xt for x in delta as a subset of delta times t star s1 union 
Uh, I want to then throw in, so I've described so far this part. And then you just want to throw in that part. So uh, I guess it would be b less than or equal to k prime of xt for x in delta prime set minus delta as a subset of delta times delta prime times r2. So those two pieces glue together to give you a contact structure defined by these two contact forms, lambda plus VDT and lambda plus VDT. And one boundary component gives you uh, the boundary of BK, and the other boundary component gives you boundary of BK prime. Other questions about this? Yeah, so, um, so what I, I hope I mentioned last time was that this, when I wrote this, this isn't a, like a fixed almost contact structure. It's only on a equivalence class of almost contact structures. Because to actually give you an almost contact structure, I need to tell you a row. Um, but then I claimed that any choice of row gives you up to equivalence i.e. up to homotopy rail boundary, gives you the same almost contact structure. Are there other questions? All right, so that's, so this is partially why, uh, so this is one of the, First, nice things about this model for holes of like contact shells we have. Because in general, if you want to know if one dominates another, that's kind of, I don't know, you need to find some way of embedding it. But for these models, we have a really simple criteria to know if one dominates the other. Just check to see if one's bigger than the other in this way. And if there is, then kind of the obvious way of building the contact of in between them works. So the next nice thing about uh, these models is conjugation. Conjugation for contact Hamiltonian shells. So let me just uh, remind you. So on a contact manifold, there's a correspondence between uh, functions and contact vector fields. Where if you're given a function k, determines a contact vector field. And given a contact vector field, it determines a function by just applying the contact form to the contact vector field. And this one-to-one -one correspondence depends on the contact vector field alpha. And I guess just for completion, this is defined by alpha of xk equals k and d alpha of xk is negative dk plus dk r alpha alpha, where r alpha is the contact form. I mean, the red vector field for alpha. OK, so then uh, uh, so claim. Uh, let, given a contact, so then the question is, 
so contact vector fields just in turn give you flows. So the question is, how does this correspondence behave under conjugating the contact flow? What is the effect of conjugating the contact vector field, the flow? What's the effect on the function? OK, so that's what I'm going to write down. So given a contact morphism with equals, so the fact pulling back the contact form alpha just gives you some positive function times alpha. Uh, then get the order right. Uh, so phi x k t d inverse uh, is the flow generated by this function where the formula for it is uh, is C. So in the Hamiltonian uh, setting, if you conjugate a Hamiltonian flow, you just pre the effect of conjugating is just precomposing the function with the with the symplectomorphism, but here you need to additionally add the change of the effect on the contact form. So, but this is going to be important for us because if we were just in the Hamiltonian setting, there'd be no way to kind of affect the size of the Hamiltonian by conjugation. But here we, this will give us an ability to change the size of the Hamiltonian by conjugating. And the size of the Hamiltonian is important because it's related to this notion of the partial order on the Hamiltonian. So and uh, this push forward uh, of k leads to equivalence of contact shells, i.e. Uh, you have the following that, so if you have a contact morphism uh, of where these things are in R2n minus 1, then uh, it induces uh, equivalence from BK A to K to B push forward. So up to equivalence, as we as you would hope, conjugation of the uh, flow doesn't change what this shell is, what this contact shell. So uh, again, I won't prove this in terms of naming what, what you have to do for rows, I'll just 
give the idea of what's happening at the level of the boundary. So the whole point is that you have contactomorphisms like this. And given by uh, x, b, t maps to v of x, the scaling factor of x times v, t. And so this gives, shows that it gives, certainly gives you a map from boundary of bk, eta k, to boundary of the push forward of k. Push forward of k. So this is a contact morphism. OK, so combining these two things, we've now reduced the problem to uh, say we want to show that one of these Hamiltonian shells dominates the other. Like our, our mission then is to find some way of conjugating this, the one we want to be smaller such that after conjugation, it's less than or equal to this one, to the one we want. show bk eta k dominated by bk prime eta k prime uh, just need to find suffices to find uh, contact embedding From delta, so this is defined. This one's defined by k and delta. This one's defined by k prime, delta prime, uh, with just after conjugation, we need it to be less than the other. So with the push forward of k, b of delta, to be less than or equal to. And this is going to already give us, so this is, I've just kind of compiled two trivialities. This is already going to give us something interesting and in, that's easy to state in the three-dimensional case. So highlight in three-dimensional case. So and by the three-dimensional case, I mean where the, the BK is going to be three-dimensional. So the, the domain is just going to be the interval of the subset of R. So it's where? n equals 1. All right, so we have the following lemma. So if k is negative somewhere, uh, then uh, and k prime maps delta to r 
Is this anything? Then BK eta k is dominated by BK prime eta k prime. So but it's like IE so in a model. Uh, in three dimensions. In the dimensional case, uh, any uh, somewhere negative Hamiltonian is minimal with respect to the partial order. Uh, F up the conjugation. And the failure for, of this lemma to be true in higher dimensions is going to be like uh, probably, probably the main complication in that arises if one would, in generalizing our proof in the three-dimensional case to the higher-dimensional case. So let me just give uh, an idea of the proof of this lemma. So we start off with uh, negative 1, 1. And so it's positive near the boundary. It might be really positive near the boundary. But we know it's negative somewhere. So let's just, with all this generality, say it's negative at 0. So we know we can, I don't know how to even take it, something like, like this. So where this is some, um, this is at negative epsilon, and this height is, say, m. So without loss of generality, and say that this is our this interval is negative epsilon, epsilon. So without less generality, k looks like this for some n and epsilon. So with, uh, of course, because I can always make k, since I just want, I'm just going to try and show that this is going to be less than something. I can always make k bigger. And if I can show it's less, if something bigger is less than, that's fine. So I'm just making my life potentially harder by making k to be really positive away from a space where it's slightly negative. Um, so now I just need to give a nice diffeomorphism. I need to give you, describe, like, I guess, a sequence of diffeomorphisms of the interval that after push forwarding this k, you get something that's has a big negative region and the positive regions are small. So you just you take something like this. Uh, so it's going to have a huge slope. Let me mark. So minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So it's going to have a huge positive slope. And then it's going to just trail off. Then it's going to taper off and then just have a very minimal positive slope out to 1. And the same. So this is phi. Where I say this, so this is basically, this is of order 
This is delta, I mean sigma, and this is like 1 minus sigma. So it has a huge slope here, then a very small slope there. And if you push for so the point is in three dimensions. There's a simple formula for what happens. This uh, at the point v of x is just v prime of x, k of x. So applying this formula to this, with this being our phi, you end up getting something like this. So basically out until 1 minus sigma and minus 1 plus sigma, it's going to be at negative epsilon times 1 over delta. So it'll be way down here at height uh, negative epsilon over sigma. And then uh, once it gets past, then it's going to be slope 1 over. It's going to be slope sigma. So times m, so it's going to be like this. And this is going to be at height m times sigma. And taking sigma to 0, these functions, given any function that's positive near the boundary, I can take sigma small enough so that uh, I have the inequality I want. So this is my purport purported k prime, and this is my push forward. OK, so uh, I guess remark uh, it's unknown uh, if this lemma is true, if lemma is true or false, well, true uh, in higher dimensions. We tried to prove it is true. Uh, that would simplify your model. Yeah. Yes. But so we, we kind of doubt it. But, uh, so yeah, so the alternative, well, either, so it would be nice to eyes away. Like, uh, if it's true, then our life would be simpler. And if you can prove it's false, then it, there's some, well, to prove it was false, you'd have to have some, hook up some capacity or something to show that it's actually false. So either true or uh, a provable answer in either way is interesting. OK. So but. Uh, so let me just say uh, uh, what remains true in higher dimensions, and that uh, will be enough for our purposes. But we kind of have to contort ourselves in a weird way to get it to work. So what remains in higher dimensions? Uh, and in a motto, it's basically this, that 
I'll give a statement, but uh, up to conjugation, the order, the the order the partial order less than or equal uh, only sees uh, k restricted to uh, the region where it's positive. So only see so the only sees this, i.e. the size of the positive part. So in here we were able to make the negative part as negative as we wanted and the positive part is smallly positive as we want it. In higher dimensions, we can only make the negative part really negative, but we don't have control over making the n parts a small positive number. And so a proposition that makes this uh, more precise is for k0, k1 mapping our domain to R, uh, we have bk0, eta k0 dominated by bk1, eta k1, if there exists a star shape domain in the interior of a delta such that One, you have k zero less than or equal to k one on op of delta take away the interior of this. Two, you have zero less than or equal to k one on op boundary, and three, you have the other way around k0 less than or equal to 0 on up with k0 restricted to this not identically 0. I'll draw a picture of these conditions. picture to have in mind is here's delta and here's boundary of delta twiddle. So and something like this is k1 where uh, k0 might be something like this. So k1's not less than or equal to k0, but the failure is inside this star-shaped region. Uh, and the way the proof goes is you take uh, auxiliary functions and you make k 
one tilde. So the point is it's zero in a neighbor. I'll write it out, but it's zero in the neighborhood of this boundary. And you have, you know, mark it. And while well, this one is, actually, it's just. So you under approximate k1 and you over approximate k0. So the idea of the proof is you uh, take k1 twiddle less than or equal to k1 and k0 twiddle bigger than or equal to k0 such that uh, 1 k twiddle is bigger than or equal, still bigger than or equal to k0 twiddle uh, outside this domain. And 2, you have that k twiddle 1 and k twiddle 0 equals 0 uh, on op boundary up here. And so now you prove that uh, using a radial Rescaling uh, contactomorphism. It uh, supported in in here. Uh, can get. Give it a name. P can get P push forward of K0 twiddle to be less than or equal to K1 twiddle. So just it's the same idea as here. We took like a like a radial rescaling thing near the middle where K was negative, and we can make the negative region really big. And really big and uh, very negative. So after rescaling, it's this is now our But this doesn't, this doesn't let us do anything about, handle anything about uh, what, like, the size of the positive parts. We can only just have complete rain on changing the order however we want on the negative part. Uh, it's probably unknown. Uh, it's uh, probably false. And that's not proof that it's not Yeah. Well, yeah, so we tried for a while to prove it was true and failed. Uh, so the real, uh, the real quick explanation for what fails if you try to mimic this proof is that the neighbor, if you, for an interval, for a one-dimensional contact domain, it's convex, it's star-shaped, and neighborhoods of its boundary are star-shaped. And this is no longer true 
in higher dimensions. It's just it's some annulus, which won't be. You can't find a like a star-shaped vector field for. Okay, so let's move on to uh, uh, using over twisted this to fill uh, contact Hamiltonian sh holes. And it'll, the, the proof of this uh, will basically be, uh, I guess, basic differential topology. And uh, the, these notions about order for these uh, models. OK, so let me just uh, remind you of what we're trying to do. So we have our specified domain. which is this the subset of R2n minus 1, where u is the sum of the radial coordinates. And I'm going to draw it always like this. even though uh, that's the reverse orientation. But I'm going to stack things side to side, so I run out of space quicker if I write it with the normal orientation. All right, so, so given let k be like this uh, with, uh, we have with k. So it's just a function of the u and z coordinates. Uh, and k of 0, some dd is less than 0, or zd. Uh, and recall, we defined this disk, dk, which is the points uh, on the boundary of bk where the z-coordinate is less than uh, zd. So the case of um, the uh, delta being the interval in the function being like this. This is the characteristic foliation on this thing. It's the thing that recovers the over twisted disk in three dimensions. So it's radial on the end of the cap. And then it has this limit cycle here. Um, and we just, well, I'll draw the whole thing. So with it being like this, and it being Living negative. And this region of it. So this is our boundary of BK. And this 
region is the DK. And uh, so the, the main proposition we want to prove is this proposition 3.9, which says that uh, if k is in this special class, uh, then uh, for any k0 also from here with k0 bigger than or equal to k, we have and the uh, contact ball with dk on its boundary. You have that bk0 connects some with b eta k0 connects some xc is equivalent to a genuine contact structure. So it starts off as written. It's only an almost contact structure because the interior of this ball is only almost contact. But after doing this connect sum, you can homotope this structure that's only almost contact in the interior of BK, and you can get it to be a genuine contact structure. So I'm going to present the I'm going to first present the proof of this in the three-dimensional case, where uh, k being special is basically vacuous, and you just need that k to be negative somewhere. And then when I spell out how you would adapt that to the high-dimensional case, we basically cooked up the definition of special to satisfy what arises to get the proof to work. Um, so let me make a comment about these number signs. So uh, boundary connected sum for contact shells. So let so as we have some contact shell, uh, with two n plus one, with embedding from some two n dimensional disk into the boundary of W such that I have a pullback of alpha equals theta. Where D2n sits inside the standard R2n uh, with theta being u1 b phi1 plus un b phi n. Uh, the star shape uh, and alpha defines uh, this almost contact structure xc, I mean eta, near the boundary of w.
So one of these, call this this uh, thing, blueing place. So given to a, yeah, a genuine contact structure. So, and then I just, uh, I'll leave it to you to check that this is precisely what you need to, if you have two contact shells, each with a gluing place, these are precisely what you need to nicely glue their boundaries together to get a new contact shell. So, uh, given gluing places, into uh, you can form and form their abstract uh, boundary connect sum. W plus uh, to be uh, W plus union some interval D times some interval union W minus mod equivalents, where you identify D cross negative L with the image under I plus, and likewise L times D is an appendix image of W minus. And here you have the form just DZ plus theta, where Z is this coordinate. And if you wanted to, you could also take this uh, where you shrink. So this is as drawn. It's kind of like W minus, and we have these gluing places specified on them. And we basically just put in a straight tube. Uh, But if you wanted to, nothing, you can, the same construction works uh, where you take, you can make the, the cross sections skinny if you want. So this, or the cross sections like uh, e to the negative beta zd is also good would also work. Uh, and in fact, if you want to perform uh, like a boundary connect sum in an ambient almost contact manifold, what you would do is you take uh, there. So happening inside some ambient thing. You have W plus and W minus, each equipped with these gluing places. Uh, so as long as you could find, uh, so what this uh, normal form 
tells you, in particular tells you, is that like the red vector field is uh, transverse to these slices. So the, the red vector field is transverse to them. And like using the red vector field, you can get like a nice normal neighborhood for them. So as long as you then, as long as you can con connect this point to this point with some path that's gamma that's transverse to uh, the almost contact structure where you as you want along the path the almost contact structure to actually genuine contact, then you have again a, you have a nice normal neighborhood for nice neighborhood theorem for neighborhoods of transverse paths, but you don't have control over the thickness of the neighborhood. So in general, you would actually need to put in some term like this that shrinks. If you want to identify this uh, ambient construction with this abstract construction, you'd want to actually allow yourself to make the tube skinny. No, it will, well, if it's a contact manifold, then yes. But if it's not a contact manifold, then that's the assumption that you can connect them via a path through where they're almost contact or genuine contact. But we're only going to, so when are we ever going to actually apply this? It's going to be the case where we've already normalized our problem to where in M, everything's contact except for a collection of balls. They look like these BKs. So it will, when, we're, when we ever apply this, it'll always be the case where outside the complement of the Ws, everything contact. But anyway, so the, the point of this is I'm, I'm going to drop, I'm not going to refer to this beta. And everything I write would have to be proved for a beta as well. But I'm just going to suppress that for sake of notation. And so there's a, there's also like a boundary. Connect some uh, for our Hamiltonian shells. And I'll just say this. So if you have given k plus or minus mapping delta to r, say with k plus that uh, u comma plus 1 is k minus that u comma minus 1. Uh, you can make the following. You can form the new kind of contact Hamiltonian shell defined on this domain. So k plus connects some k minus mapping delta connects some, some length L to R. Uh, and so let's call this function E of U. And I'll just draw the, so the domain is like this, going out to L plus 2 and negative L minus 2 down to negative L down to positive L. So you have k plus here. So this is the domain. You have k plus here. These are z and this is u. And inside here, you just put this function u, e. And so the lemma is, is that uh, you have that you can't identify uh, so you can so there's two ways you can do it. You can take this 
contact Hamiltonian on this star-shaped domain and form the associated contact shell, and that's the same thing as what would happen if you did the connect, boundary connect sum of the two shells individually. Okay, so that's now uh, the, the sketch of proof of prop 3.9 in dimension 3, where now k is just so just. So we're in this setting right now. This thing is just this interval. And I don't need k to be some fancy, from my, some fancy uh, class of special Hamiltonians. I just, I'm going to just ask that k from here to here is, say, negative at this point cd. And I want to prove that, and with no assumption on either on this inequality. So I just, for any other, for any other R, uh, k0 as uh, bk0 connects on b. is equivalent to a genuine structure. So that's what I want to prove. So we're going to consider, uh, so let me draw so here's my negative one to one, and here's my k, uh, whatever my k zero is. And so I'm inside k, inside bk. So remember the construction of bk is we took the graph of k and we added some constants so that to k, so k, k plus some constants is always positive, and then we look at the area under that graph. So I'm gonna, so that means we should draw bk like something like this. So this is the region bk as a subset of interval times R2. Uh, and inside BK, uh, we're going to consider something like this. So in this region here is uh, BK prime or K prime equaling k minus epsilon on negative 1 plus epsilon 1 minus epsilon. And since k prime uh, comma this region is less than or equal to k with this interval, we have this genuine contact structure. 
in here? So, so this is the genuine contact structure. And we're actually going to restrict ourselves uh, even more to where this place where it's negative. So we're going to let uh, let bold b x c b z b t in this annulus such that z is in negative one b b. So if we were to draw it in, it's So it's what's this. So this is our and what this is, all this is is it's a one sided neighborhood of our over twisted disk. So this is our it's a contact ball. So this A, it's an annulus, I, which is just, a, in this case, I, like a neighborhood of a two-dimensional sphere. Uh, it's really rotated around the T direction. And so this, and this boundary out here would be what our, this is out sitting out here is our, this thing in blue is our, is our D sub K. Okay, so here's the big thing that's very easy to do in dimension three. It's build a family of embeddings. From negative one, one to uh, negative two minus L. L plus two, two plus L, uh, such that uh, one, uh, it's just the. It starts off. It's just translation. So it's just the map Z maps to Z plus one plus L. Uh, to it's always this translation map. If uh, z is bigger than or equal to zd, and three, so the three is the kicker. This is the real. Obviously, you could do the first two always. Uh, we want that the final map applied to this k prime is less than or equal to k zero connects on k. So this is the hard. Hard part in general. So this is this is the part that's hard in higher dimension. So, but to proving this in three dimensions is, uh, yeah. Given the proof I already did about how we can make things really negative in the three-dimensional case, it's hopefully believable because we're situated like this. So here's our function. Uh, Here's what our delta connects them delta looks like, and here's our functions. So our function is, it first starts off with just k0, so it does something wacky. And then it's constant for a while, and then it does k0. I mean, so this, this, is, this region is 
k0 of this region is k, and this region in the middle is just this constant function e. And what do we have? We have this uh, function k prime here. And we need to expand it out such that at the end it's completely less than this long function. So of course, how you just take this negative region and blow it up, like zoom in to this negative region by a scaling, such that after you're done, it looks like this. So this is your So hopefully that's believable. Like this is an honest picture in three, like just a function on a line. That I can just like I got on a fixed interval, I got my function to be really negative. I can do it on like where the interval shifted now. But once you believe that, then here's how to. So you this is being able to do this easy is special to three dimensions. So now, how do we finish with this embedding once we have it? So we go back to looking kind of in this picture, where we've shifted all the functions up. So what we have is. Uh, so you build with from this family, uh, you build uh, isotopy. of BK zero next some BK. And I'll draw. So you shifted it way up, and it's k0 is kind of crazy. Then it's flat for a while, then it just does k0. So this is our bk0 next on bk. And inside here, you have sitting uh, kind of our annulus. Inside here, you have our sitting this. So this is just our, well, it's our, the BK prime shifted over, but I'll just. have this this annulus region in here. So this is our annulus region. Where the contact structure is where we have a contact structure. So what's what's the problem? What so what we have this picture and then by the time we're done with the isotopy we have this picture. But now I've, we've taken k prime, and after we're done, it's this blue curve sitting completely under k0. So it's something like this. So this is our v hat 1 of the k prime. And now. Since we have that this is true here, we know how to fill in a contact structure on, in this in-between point, point. So we have a contact structure here. So contact structure. 
since uh, um, this push forward one of k prime is less than or equal to k zero. So that was like what I said at the beginning of class of the lecture today. That whenever you have one function less than or equal to the other function, you can put it inside a context structure. So I'm putting in that one. So now, what do I want? I wanted a contact structure to fill in this region, this BK region. That's the part that, from the get-go, I only know it's contact near the boundary, but I know nothing about the inside. But I've, and I have some contact structure here, but I want to fill in this region. So I have this region, question mark. Well, I know how to solve it here. So I just need to take this picture and pull this blue region back to where it started. And that defines the contact structure in here. So, and that's what this isotopy does. So, so you have an isotopy so that basically uh, that by the end, well, right, it starts off. Uh, zero is the identity. Two, it, uh, it mimics imposed, it recovers this family of new maps as a map from BK prime. The BK zero connects some BK. And three, by the end, it's you have that of BK zero connects some this annulus region is bk0 connects on k set minus what, int of one push forward of bk so this is just saying that i can take this picture always fix uh, uh, and this equals this and equals uh, identity on z bigger than or equal to z, z plus 1 plus l. So I take this picture, I fix this level zd plus 1 plus l. That's just the shifting factor, given that I had to shift these domains by some and put something in the middle. So I take this picture, and I can, with a smooth isotopy, given that I have this family of embeddings, take this picture to this picture inside here while always keeping this region fixed. And that tells you that. You have that defined to be pullback of eta k0 connects some k uh, family. Of almost contact structures on this BK zero connect sum bold B uh, with sigma one a genuine. Contact structure. Because at the end, I'm just, the final structure I have is just this red region pulled back to that structure. So, and that's, so, and that proves it, so that we're done. Because this is the family of almost contract structures that starts off with just the standard one that you would get from gluing these two pieces together. And we have a homotopy from the standard one, when sigma equals 0, to a 1 that's a genuine context structure on this case. So that proves this proposition in the three-dimensional case. And the whole, this whole story generalizes. The part that's harder in higher dimensions is proving this. So this is the part that needs to, you need harder, more work. Work. 
dimensions. Yeah, I guess that I'll have to do that next time.